Cufflinks are a fashion trend with definite staying power. They've been holding shirt cuffs together since the 17th century. Early versions were buttons linked by short chains, an improvement over the ribbons and pins the gentlemen of the day had been using to fasten their sleeves. Clothes may make the man, but a set of cufflinks can make the outfit. They add a bit of flash to conservative business garb and convey a sense of occasion. Buttons may be easier, but cufflinks are about taking the trouble to look really spiffy. A pair of high-end cufflinks starts with sterling silver, gold, or platinum. A craftsman cuts out blanks. These blanks will be used for the fronts of the cufflinks. He places one of the silver blanks on a die engraved with a recessed grid pattern. A hydraulic press closes and squeezes the silver blank into the die, transferring the pattern onto the silver. This company has over a thousand cufflink patterns, some of which date back to the mid-19th century. With these dies, they continue to handcraft cufflinks the traditional way. Pressing the pattern onto the silver has caused the metal to expand, so he trims the excess from the perimeter. There's another benefit to this. The trimming works the silver to harden it. From a plain silver blank to a cufflink face with artistic expression. A craftsperson now attaches a silver stem to the back of a cufflink face. He melts silver solder between the two, and as it cools, it creates a solid bond. The stem's shape is a slightly curved design to allow the cufflink to sit perfectly on a cuff. The soldering torch oxidizes and darkens the silver slightly, so he dips the parts in a sulfuric acid bath. The acid pulls out the black and the parts become silvery white once again. Next, the brass bristles of a revolving wheel make tiny scratches on the silver to brighten it substantially. Each cufflink now undergoes a very intensive enameling using a mix of finely ground colored glass and water. Here, the enamelist applies blue glass to the cufflink's stamped grid detailing and then paints yellow around the perimeter. It takes a steady hand and experience to do an even job. If one color bleeds into the next, it can't be fixed and she'll have to scrap this cufflink and start anew. Then it's into a kiln fired to 1000 degrees Celsius. The heat melts the glass and it flows into the detailing to give it definition. At the same time, the glass fuses to the metal surface. And then it's back to the artist for another layer of glass. The enameler will repeat this process between three and seven times to produce a perfect luster and depth of color. The color deepens with each layer and the result is a rich translucent enamel surface. Leaving the kiln, the enamel is a bit wavy, so the worker files it down until the surface is completely flat and level. Then the cufflinks go back into the kiln for one last firing. He polishes the enameled surface against an abrasive wheel, using a mix of volcanic ash and water for a polishing paste. This takes hours, but it gives the glass enamel a glossy finish. Now the focus returns to the cufflink stem and the domed spring link fittings that are the closing mechanisms. He heats a needle-thin wire to make it slightly pliable and then pushes it into the fitting to engage a spring that attaches to the cufflink stem. With the fitting installed, he clips the excess wire at both ends. To secure the installation, he hammers the ends of the wire to flare them out, turning them into a kind of rivet. With the fitting now solidly attached to the cufflink stem, he lightly files the edges with an emery board to give the part a perfectly smooth finish. He buffs the cufflink's exposed silver against a cloth wheel and uses a polishing agent to make it really gleam. After at least six hours of work, these enameled silver cufflinks are now complete. In the business world, where men usually dress in a suit and tie, a custom set of cufflinks is one way to express individuality, but still fit in with the rest of the guys.